Hello everyone, this is Hanxian Huang, a second year PhD student from UC San Diego. I'm working with Professor Jishen Zhao. I'm very happy here to share my project on Perl um, towards easier persistence aware programming, a deep reinforcement learning approach, which aims helping translate volatile C or C++ source code into the corresponding persistent aware code. So this is the outline of today's presentation. First, I will talk about the motivation of this project. Uh, what is the difficulty in persistent memory aware programming uh, and why we want to ease this programming. Uh, and then I will show how the problem is defined. Uh, and I will show our solution, which is a reinforcement learning based framework, uh, and finally show the result. The motivation comes from the challenges in persistent aware programming. Uh, we all know that the non volatile memory enable fast and durable storage. Uh, the only concern is that it will suffer consistency problem after power failure. So it brings challenges for users to write additional codes to pr promise the cons consistency and enable the recovery after the system failure. The first challenge is that user uh, need to learn additional program knowledge, such as uh, one may need to be familiar with some non time main memory aware library and also know knowledge on memory such as how and when to flush the cache or uh, add memory barriers and the second problem is that uh, it requires in-depth code changes based on the original volatile code and, and it's very labor intensive. Uh, so some uh, normal time main memory aware libraries and tokens are developed to offer more higher uh, level functions and enable a friendly programming method. Uh, however, users still need to uh, study how to use this library or tokens to do uh, much additional programming. And the last challenge is that the additional coding easily leads, leads to new errors, or it requires some expert uh, experience to promise the correctness. So our goal is to close the gap between user and the person's memory. How can we help a new user, uh, assuming who only know how to to volatile programming to have a correct persist aware programming. Uh, so we want to assist automatic, correct, efficient, and fast uh, persist aware code generation. Uh, here we show what is this problem looks like. Uh, suppose the users only need how to write volatile C or C++ code. And uh, the user also know which data structure wanted to be stored in the process memory. So the input is a piece of pure C or C++ volatile source code and the assigned data structure. Uh, and the output is the corresponding is this memory aware C or C++ code with the uh, desired and safe control on the target data structure. Uh, and here's an example of the uh, corresponding input source code and the target uh, output code after uh, adding some uh, APIs. Uh, so in this black box, uh, we firstly want to choose some correct programming APIs, such as uh, this transaction 
uh, pin and or add, etc. Uh, so uh, actually, th this APIs can be uh, some high level library uh, interface and also some, it, it can be also some uh, low level assembly code or uh, instructions. So here we choose the PMDK library APIs, uh, which is more uh, convenient in coding and also easier to do the checking. Uh, I manually collect some uh, PMDK APIs from the, the PMDK example codes to, uh, to be a, an, ex, uh, an API pool in the first step. Uh, especially some C++ binding uh, APIs from the uh, uh, PMAN object++ library, uh, by which we can easily assign which data structure to be persistent. So uh, after choosing the API, we need to insert it into a correct place. Uh, it can be uh, insert some uh, insert one line of code or wrap a piece of code into an API. Uh, here we will slice the source code by curly brackets. Uh, and after that, we need to use some checkers to check and promise the persistency and consistency of the generated program. Uh, here we mainly use Vergreen PMN checker and PM reorder. Uh, so here we show an example. Suppose the users have a one-type code like this, uh, but uh, want to put the list structure into persist memory. So when we need to do something, we uh, when we want to append list, we need to do something. So uh, each time we will pick one API from the API pool and insert it in the uh, in some place. So for example, uh, this time uh, we will choose transaction begin and end and wrap a piece of code, like this three lines of code in into this uh, transaction API. Uh, and then after each modification, uh, actually we can say the, the code goes into a new code state from the original code to uh, the code with this transaction begin and API. So uh, after that, we will check the persistency and consistency with the checker of the, uh, each new node and uh, feedback each new state with a grade. Uh, and then we will like pick another APIs and inserts and modify the code and then check uh, to do this iteration. Uh, sometimes we may need to do uh, back checking uh, and also update the grades of the pre president states and try new APIs from the president states. And after this iteration, we can finally come out a solution. Um, so we use uh, the multicolor tree search based uh, machine learning framework to search the proper modification of the program. Uh, here I will first uh, go through the multicolor tree search in a high level. And I will, uh, after that, I will show the whole framework. Um, so the multicolor tree search is basically a kind of a, a, a broad definition of kind of a kind of tree search. So you can do it with uh, do it in a conventional way or combining with uh, some machine learning neural network to help improve the policy and evaluation function. Uh, as shown in this figure, uh, there, there are two elements in the in this tree, uh, the node and the edge. So the node here represent different code states uh, as the example we show above. So uh, each node 
may have some uh, different library API API combinations based on the root node, based on the uh, source code. And the uh, edge means inserting an API in a certain place. Uh, it's a, a, a kind of action and which will train the change the uh, code state. Uh, each uh, each state uh, and each edge will have a edge value. We will call it a benefit value here to represent uh, how good it is to take this edge, take this action on the current node. Um, the multiple tree search uh, combines four steps selection, expansion, simulation, and backpropagation. Uh, the first step is the selection. So starting from a certain root, we will uh, select the edge, uh, which will maximizing the edge value plus the probability. Uh, and we will get the prob probability from a policy and value network. Uh, we, we choose to use the neural network and uh, yeah, we, we will introduce that later. And this step to choose uh, the edge, maximize, maximizing the edge value plus probability. So this step will uh, actually reduce the search width uh, by focusing on only exploring the uh, high probability node. And the second step is the expansion. So uh, after take certain uh, action through the edge, uh, uh, it we will change the code, code state in from one node to another node. And the third step is simulation. So there are two parts in in this simulation. The first part comes from the value network and the second part comes from a random rollout to the lift node using a def uh, default naive policy. So in this step, uh, we will take the positive children node into consideration by this simulation. And the final step is to uh, use the result of the uh, rollout to update edge value along the path from current nodes to the root node. Uh, so why we uh, implement this searching agent by uh, multicolor tree search? Uh, because it's uh, an efficient search algorithm to solve the huge search space problem. And uh, yeah, because we, we will train the policy network to focus on only exploring the high probability nodes or, or say the high value node. And second uh, is a kind of look ahead search. So uh, it will take the rest of the actions, the, the rest of the possible nodes into consideration uh, and simulate the searching to update the current node. Um, So after introducing the multicolor tree search, uh, we will introduce the whole framework, which is a reinforcement learning based framework. The framework consists of three stages. The first stage is uh, observing the state and uh, encoding the program into uh, input into the this policy and value network. Uh, and then in the second stage, the network will take action to choose and insert APIs uh, in, in a certain place in, into the program, into the current uh, program. And in the third stage, the environment, which is our persistency checker, will take the modified code as input and check the persistency and consistency and give some feedback to this network. Uh, so in the in training process, the 
network will get this feedback, get this reward, and update its parameters according to this feedback and uh, learn how to explore uh, more reasonable actions to win more possible positive uh, reward feedback. And yeah, that, that is uh, the, the model learn how to modify the code based on the library and uh, try to promise the persistency and consistency. Uh, and after we train this uh, policy and value network offline, we can do the online inference. So in the inference stage, the, the well-trained uh, neural network will imitate the human, human behavior of uh, choosing and uh, inserting API to help. Uh, uh, and this step will help us uh, modifying the program. And um, compared to other supervised learning neural network, we don't uh, need to prepare too much data set uh, because we, we will have a simulation process to, to generate the, the data set along this process. Uh, yeah, but if we actually have a uh, well-prepared C++ and the corresponding uh, golden process memory aware code pair data set, we can also try supervised learning model. Mm. So here I uh, only want to introduce our framework in a high level and skip the detail on uh, of how to build or train this model. Um, and in the experiment, we use Volgren PN check uh, to uh, and the PN reorder to evaluate the consistency, consistency and persistency of the generated program. So we use uh, Volgren PN check to uh, validate the correctness of the stores that are made into the process pers memory and also get uh, the, the error numbers of not persistent stores from the report. And the PM reorder will check the code consistency by running a uh, different combination of several stores between flash friends variants. Uh, so these are the data set I used to train and test the model. So the training data set comes from the C or C++ version of PMDK example code. Uh, and the test set is uh, part of an open source legal solution data set. So here we show some experiment results of the proposed framework. Uh, the generated code from our framework on uh, such as tree, hash, array, queue, structure, etc., uh, micro benchmark, and also uh, the real world case uh, KV store, uh, they can all pa pass the both Walgreen PMAN check and PM reorder test and shows persistency and consistency correct. So it means on these test cases, uh, our model can achieve 100% translation accuracy. Uh, and we can also see from this figure that the generated code on microbenchs have very similar average execution time of multiple reads and writes compared to the expert code. Uh, and we can also show an example later that the generated code on microbench is actually very similar to the expert code. And for the real world case, KV store, uh, since the code it has more complicated data structures and functions, so our generated code may lead into some redundant APIs that have a higher overhead, but uh, we can still promise the persistency and consistencies correct in this uh, case. 
Uh, here I show an example of our generated code based on the Q data structure. So the input is the pop function of Q and our framework will insert the transaction run and delete the persistent object. And then we can finally get the right-hand side corresponding PN aware code. Uh, and actually uh, this kind of Translation is uh, one of the efficient ways to make this pop function persist. Uh, as we have shown before, uh, our translated codes have very similar efficiency compared to the uh, PMDK baseline code. Uh, and the code translation can actually be failed especially in some complicated cases, uh, since we all know that the machine learning is inherently fuzzy and approximate. So the, uh, so I, I show some few cases here. Uh, we can figure out that the, the few cases can be like missing or wrong APIs, uh, like inserting the API into a wrong place, or uh, it can be successful on most of most of the parts, but fail on the other part of the code. So uh, the whole piece is uh, whole piece of the code is failed. Um, but ho however, uh, very luckily, most of this bug can be easily detected by the checkers or debugging tools. So we can still fix the wrong parts by uh, the debugging tools and made the whole piece of the code work. Uh, so we can say our framework can help towards easier PM aware coding uh, to some extent, and the generated code can actually be further improved by the checker or debugging tools. Um, we are still, still trying to improve the code translation quality and try to make our uh, framework more robust. So our model uh, can be improved from this aspect. Um, first, we, sh uh, we will try to find more training data sets. Uh, the training data set is the volatile source code and the corresponding uh, golden PN aware code pair. Um, the better data set we will cover more cases, especially the real world cases. So it can improve the model translation accuracy and also make our framework more pr practice. Uh, we are still trying to improve the code translation quality and also try to make our framework more robust. So our framework can be improved from this aspect. Uh, first, we would like to try to find more training data sets. The data, training data sets uh, is the volatile source code and the corresponding PM aware code pair. And the better data set will cover more cases, especially the real world cases, and it can improve the model translation accuracy and make our framework more practical. And second, we are currently only consider the code persistency and consistency. Uh, so we will further also consider the code efficiency in the reward function to award the higher efficient uh, gen efficiency generated code with a higher grade. So this can help reduce the redundant APIs and lower the overhead of the generated code. And third, we will uh, use other additional checkers in training, and this can make our model uh, to learn to uh, how to avoid other kinds of bugs and make the generated code more robust. And finally, uh, as we 
have mentioned before, we will use some debugging tools uh, such as PM test to fix some syntax or performance bugs. Uh, so by, by doing all of this, we will further improve our framework and try to make it more practical. Uh, and finally, to summarize our work, we introduced a deep reinforcement learning approach to help ease the uh, persistence aware programming. Uh, given the uh, volatile source code input, our uh, framework will generate the corresponding non volatile aware codes based on the PMDK library APIs and the persistency and consistency will be checked by uh, PMAN check and PM reorder. Uh, we have shown a successful translation on both microbench and real world case. Uh, and our generative program can achieve similar uh, performance compared to the experts code, especially uh, on the microbenches. And the generative codes can be also further improved uh, to reduce the syntax bugs and performance bugs by other debugging tools. Uh, and our work contributes to reduce the study cost and labor on modifying existing volunteer datasets and also encourage the use of non volunteer main memory on the existing volunteer source code. All right, that's so much of my presentation. Any questions and suggestions are welcomed. Thank you for listening.